about the degree of freedom. Now, degree of freedom is a very important uh, concept in statistics. Many people, they explain a degree of freedom in many ways. Some explain it with the examples of toffees, chocolates, that they want to distribute uh, the toffees and chocolates to various people. Then at the end, whatever is left is given to that person. Some people explain the degree of freedom with various other examples. Somebody has explained the example with the example, this degree of freedom that you want to interview a few people. Say there are, there are many persons like Ram, Sham, Gita, Hari, Mohan, Preeti, Rani, Rajni. But every day you want to interview only one person. Say, you want, you have got, say, eight candidates whom you want to interview for any job or for any admission or for some many other purpose. You want to interview them. And there are, there are eight candidates, but every day you can interview only one. Now, first day, now there are eight candidates. You have got eight choices. You can call anybody. You can call anybody. You can, uh, mm, you have got eight choices. Say on first day, you interviewed Gita. When you interviewed Gita, so next day, you will have only seven choices because Gita is gone. You have got only seven choices. Second day, there will be seven choices. Now, on second day, you interview Mohan. So, you get only six choices. So, your first day, freedom was with eight candidates. Second day, you lost one freedom. You lost one freedom and you got seven. Next day, you got you interviewed now, third day, you have already interviewed two persons. So now you have got only six persons with you. So you have got six choices. So degree of freedom is only six. And third day, you are again interviewing Preeti. So you are going to lose again. You are going to lose again one degree of freedom. So you have got next day five choices. So degree of freedom are only five. Next day, every day you are losing, every day you are losing one degree of freedom. Every day you are losing one degree of freedom. And the seventh day you will have only two degrees of In analysis, we use, when we use the data, we lose the observations because many observations are used by the data. So I explain the people in this way. When we use one result to get second result, we lose one degree of freedom. For instance, if we have got 10 observations and first I find mean. When I find mean, now I am going to find standard deviation or, or a variance. When I find variance, now how many, how many observations are left with me? Say there are originally 10. Now I have got the mean. Now I am going to use the mean for further calculations. So I am, I am only left with nine observations. So when I'm going to find the variance, I will divide the sum of squares with nine, not 10. 
Now, if I am going to use, if I am going to use, if I am going to use two results, if I am going to use two results to find out, to find out third result, I will use, I will lose two degree of freedom. I will lose two degrees of freedom. So, we, this, this is used by data calculations. Now, when I use two results, so I will lose two degrees of freedom. I will say 10 observations are there. I have used two, I have, first I have found out two results and then I'm going to find out the third result, but I will be having only eight observations with me. Say I'm going to use three results to find out the fourth result. So I'm going to use three degrees of like this. Now I give you a very, very simple straight calculations. Very simple straight calculation. I'm just going to insert, say, I insert one table here. Say, I will, I will draw three columns, three or four columns. The number of rows I will say, nine. I'll centralize this table. Put it in the center so that everybody can see it. Now, I have got 10 salesmen. Sorry, sorry, there is only one salesman. There is only one salesman. And every month, every month he gets me some sales. Every month he gets me some sales. Say so this is for example. First month he get me the sales of 10 lakhs. Second month he gets me the sale of 12 lakhs. Third month, he gets me the sales of, say, 15 lakhs. Fourth month, he gets me the sales of, say, 20 lakhs. Fifth month, he gets me the sales of 25 lakhs. Now, I want to find out, I want to find out what is the growth rate of this gentleman? What is the growth rate of this? Now, if I want to find out the average growth rate, I will find out the average growth rate. That there's a simple way to find out the average growth rate. That is, first month will be 12 minus 10. 12 minus 10 divided by 10. This will be divided by 10, multiplied by 100 percentage. Let us find out this percentage. So it will be, it will be 10, 12 divided, 12 minus 10 divided by 10 into 100. So this will be 20 percent. So this will be 20 percent. The second month is 15 minus 12, 3. 3 divided by 12 into 100. So it will be 25%. The fourth month will be 20 minus 15 divided by 15 divided by 15 into 100. So this will be coming as say 33%. Now next month is 25 minus 20 5 divided by 20 into 100 so this will come as 25 now my total of all these things comes 103 now my question to you to find out the average we will divide by how many months we will divide by how many months now you will say there are five months but actually, you are going to find the average of 4 only. So, we will divide this by 4. Reason is, we have lost 1 degree of freedom. 
we have lost one degree of freedom, which one is has been calculated, used by this under calculation. If one has gone inside the calculation, because we started with this 10, 10 is already gone. So we left, left with only four. So we have divided by four. So we are not going to divide actual months. Actual observations are five. Actual observations are five. But we are not going to divide it by five. We are going to divide by four because we have left with only, we have got the freedom of only four. So this is what I wanted to explain you, the concept of degree of freedom. This is going to be very important for you in all the calculations. Or two variables, we may use this formula also. The reason is connected with mainland of the country by 22.5 km at Siliguri corridor. That is a vast area is only connected by 22.5 km only. One side Bangladesh, another side Nepal. This corridor only 22.5 km. This vast land is connected with this main land. The Northeast region consists of eight states of the country. They are Sikkim, Sikkim inserts at 2002, Sikkim, then Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Manipur, Nagaland, Mizoram, and Tripura. Excepting Sikkim and Assam, the more or less 90% budget of all states depend on central grant in aid. You may submit your research work at Journal of Global Economy, rcssindia.org. Your work is evaluated by peers with double blind methodology. You will get comments for your work. Thank you.